All right, everybody. This is a walkthrough of Tierra de Conciencia on the Civ Classic server. Uh, we're towards, well, this is current. Uh, it's been going for about a year now. And we're starting off where we started off at the very beginning, which is in the mushroom biome where we landed when we first founded the town. We decided to stay here because there were no monsters, it was relatively safe, and it was flat enough to build in. Uh, we ended up not building anything here. There is a small underground base that is completely empty now uh, where we first started, but I figured we would start walking from here so you could see things in the order they were constructed. So starting off here there is a gap between these two hills this became known as mushroom pass uh still not built out thoroughly but um it does empty into a nice little tree farm and then the city proper behind that you can see some of the buildings starting to load in here and of course, the large world trees that we preserved so they couldn't be destroyed. We made extensive use of terraforming of the land to keep everything nice and flat. And that allowed us to build many of the things that we later constructed here. So uh, on the right here is the Writer's Guild built by Zahn, I believe. Shoot, I don't remember exactly who it was. On the left is the TDC library, Biblioteca de Revolución, filled with books from past servers, current servers, four or five stories. There are actually balconies on top of the books that you can reach by climbing all the way up. And I may have missed first balcony but we'll go out onto the second gives you a nice view of the rooftops everything else nearby let's go back down the stairs really quick now you'll notice I have turned gamma bright off there are some areas I may have to turn it on most of us play with that on and a lot of things like these fires have been turned out down or turn, turned off over time. So uh, probably the first building we constructed here in town was this one. Uh, currently serves dual purpose as an art gallery and a post office upstairs, along with the string of three brutalist style condos in a row from that. Across the street here we have the Mongolian Grill, also one of the first buildings built in town. Uh, you can see the fire is out, normally that would be lit. And the bar has all the taps flipped down for some reason. And there are reserved chairs for each of the people who were here at the founding of the town. So once again, this was designed in a brutalist style. You'll notice from here that the library is actually three large books. And if we look on the other side here, we can see the name is Mark Sterner and Kropotkin, three prominent anarchist philosophers, thinkers who inspired the city. Over here, we have the TDC Lighthouse. Uh, I do not have a name for the person who constructed the pedestal on which it's built. However, uh, it was most of the regular citizens who actually built the lighthouse here. So it is functional in the sense that you can go inside. It has living quarters in it. It has a staircase to the top and a fireplace. So it is a fully functional building inside and out. Down here you can see the waterfront road running the length of the city. 
Uh, it doesn't really go anywhere at this point. It was intended to extend around the island as we grew. However, we grew so densely that that didn't really happen. Uh, walking down the street here on the left, you'll see that both the Mongolian Grill building and the building next to it, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, were both constructed with a shared elevator slash stairwell. So uh, we'll go up there in a second. Uh, now I'm sure you've had your eye on this oddly shaped building down the street here. This is Habitat 420. It was built as housing for citizens of the city. Never finished. However, there is some degree of inside to this building and some of the apartments have been completed. You'll notice the local rail line does run straight through the lobby here. And this is not particularly well lit, but it is daytime so you can see. Oh, and it looks like somebody stole the bed out of this apartment. Great. Anyways, it is getting dark. I'm going to go ahead and turn on Gamma Bright so that we can continue walking around. And over here, kind of a late addition, is the... your average memorial tunnel constructed in memory of your average Rick who went on a wild killing spree and got himself temporarily banned or something along those lines a while back. So we'll walk back down into town. Now this plaza out in front of Habitat 420 is actually the Plaza of Revolution. Uh, or actually, it may be unnamed. Anyways, this is Avenue uh, Julio something. Uh, the name stems from the fact that we had a war with Mount Augusta to the north, which ended in the pretty much complete griefing and destruction of both cities at the time. Uh, we did manage to clean up and Mount Augusta moved on to a different island. Uh, the conflict was in regards to them encroaching on our land. And it looks like the name is over here on the sign, Avenue de 11 Julio. So on the 11th of July, 2018 was when this war happened. And it was probably the only time I've ever destroyed another city. However, we had exhausted all diplomatic options at the time. Uh, this street is the Avenue of Glorious Revolution. Never completed fully, has buildings along part of the length, but you'll notice it does have the rail line running directly next to it, separated by a nice little fence. And these lamps all have daylight sensors on top of them, so they will turn out automatically during the daytime. Up here we have the city park. Uh, this stat you hear was donated by Airhaven generously towards the beginning of the map. Uh, I've seen similar ones in some other cities, so I, uh, you know, I'm happy they stopped by here and dropped that off. Uh, we do have a small wedding chapel over here, uh, with accessible seating, of course. Um, and I do believe it has been used in the past, but it has a wonderful view of the ocean here and it's located right in the heart of downtown TDC. So next to that is actually the Zen, the Confucian Taoist Temple, the Taoist Temple, uh, which was also built by locals here. We have a prayer board. You can throw up all your Minecraft related prayers on there. And there's actually several inner Areas of the temple that are only accessible by monks and commoners are blocked out with this fence. So uh, other than that, uh, the build does provide a nice contemplative walk, well lit, free of mobs, and apparently not free of grief, but it has been a while since someone has been in here. I'm sure the monks will be along to fix that. 
I'm going to step back out into the park here and continue. Now this building you can see ahead of us is actually based off of the Russian Workers Club. Um, it was modeled after that. Now if you look at the pictures side by side, you will notice there are some differences uh, and some adjustments that we had to make to build, put it into Minecraft. However, uh, this is known as Palacio de Trabajadores, or the Palace of the Workers, and is the central gathering place for the people of our commune. So uh, when you walk in, first of all, you're greeted with a large lobby in this cylindrical glass room. Uh, there's some water features and, of course, some plants, and so... We're going to go upstairs first here. Now uh, you'll see the main meeting hall with chairs for all the members around this table. There's a small bar in the corner. Uh, all of our spaces are designed to construct or are constructed to mirror a non-hierarchical design. So you'll notice all the chairs are facing inwards towards a potential speaker rather than up towards a podium. Uh, intentionally designed to give all members equal standing and equal power within the commune uh, rather than having one person be physically indicated as the leader. Now we'll walk downstairs. This is actually the judicial chamber and you'll notice it does have a central seating area for whoever happens to be on trial or addressing the room. Uh, this was also designed intentionally. However, the two sides of the ben the room will face each other to indicate the fact that a decision must be made regarding the accused. Uh, also, part of the physical design that we take very seriously here in TDC. Now, this was originally intended to be judicial chambers. That did not happen. So... Uh, this is not one of my favorite areas of the build. I feel like we overused the wood here quite a bit, but uh, we may be able to tidy that up if we ever build something similar again. Now let's go ahead and walk through the alley here. Uh, this alley has some secrets too. However, I don't think I'll be covering those as we have limited time. Let's go up to the second floor here. Now, uh, we are on that sky bridge between the two buildings now. If you go this way, there's uh, some junk in this room. Uh, same thing downstairs. Generally, just big empty areas available for whatever we need them for at the time. However, here is the archives for the town. Um, it looks like it is still somewhat under construction. There's some stuff in the middle of the floor here. But it's actually one of the areas that we were the most proud of because... We have this cylindrical um, extension of the ceiling that gives a little bit more height, allows for that, uh, that decorative lighting fixture there that also happens to have glass embedded in it so that the natural light from outdoors can come in during the daytime. We have a fireplace, a uh, circulation desk, and there's actually a gallery so you can look down on any proceedings in the chamber below. Let me go ahead and turn off Gamma Bright here. I do believe this area is fully lit. So uh, these chests were intended to hold documents and proceedings from the town. I have no idea how that bed made it there. Um, but this is definitely one of the most well-constructed areas of the town. Though you can see there's some dark spots where we could probably stand to redo the lighting. Let's go ahead and go up onto the roof here for a second. And yeah, there's probably not a lot you're expecting on the roof. However, if viewed from above, this building does happen to have a wonderful pixel art picture of Karl Marx on it, uh, visible to anybody passing by in the sky or anybody using any mapping mods to map out the area. And this is a common theme you'll see in many of our buildings is that we use the roof as a spot to put pixel art. So uh, let's go ahead and head back out into the alley here and we're gonna walk past the Palace of the Workers onto this side road here. Now uh, this is just a tree farm across the way, nothing 
uh, future building land. But right here behind us, we have uh, um, Casablanca. So the White House, uh, another one of the large buildings here in downtown TDC. Uh, it was designed just as additional space for the city. This was intended to be a shop or a storefront on the ground level here. Um, but if we actually come in here, you have elevators uh, or elevator shafts on either side. Uh, we're going to head up to Piso Tres for the Gulag Gazette. Now, the Gulag Gazette, while it never did get off the ground, was intended to be our local newspaper, and the offices were completed. So we have the newsroom here with several desks in the back room here. Whoop, that's the balcony, not the back room. In the back room here, we actually have the printing press, uh, which has been heavily used uh, both to stock the library and to duplicate other works. Uh, we have another balcony over here with a good look over the tree farm and out into the sugarcane fields and so but and then of course we have some collaborative working spaces once again being decentralized there are some editorial offices and that's pretty much it for Casablanca the rest of the building is currently empty but it was one of the better designed better built buildings in the city looks very at home four stories tall uh, some of the building ideas and techniques we pioneered in here went on to be used in later buildings mainly in Mount Augusta um, but both Casablanca and the Palace of the Workers were two of our greatest accomplishments here in town. Now, we'll go ahead and walk down the road here. I have no idea what this is. Hmm. Somebody has been here. Well, not going to mess with it right now. Uh, here to the right, you have Diagonal Voto, uh, which goes to Godo's area of town, Villa Esplendida, which is a little direction that way. But we're actually going to follow this road straight for now. And pardon the time duration here. It is a little bit of a walk. So uh, this rail line is actually mirrored underground. We decided to bring it up onto the surface to encourage development along it. Uh, the farms are straight ahead. There's actually a mesa biome on the other side of this bridge. But for all intents and purposes, these two flame towers kind of indicate the end of the city of TDC and the start of the province. So uh, viewed from the side, this bridge is actually pretty cool. Um, there's farms up above. They're not particularly nice to look at. Uh, the rail does end here. However, this tunnel is dug a considerable ways and the rail could very easily be expanded that way at any point. Uh, there are some areas of TDC that were not as intentionally designed. One of these is actually on the left here. Let's look for a crossing. It looks like someone blocked it off, but we can jump down there. Um, this is mm, I forget the name of this area ravine city so uh, the entire thing is built in a ravine hollowed out so um, obviously not a lot of sunlight coming through here uh, however with the benefit that we could have these larger central areas and have the shops dug into the walls of the ravine around them. Uh, the We do get the newspaper down here from Yolotl. Um I don't think it has been delivered recently. So that's probably a few months out of date. 
So we're going to head back to the main part of town. Actually, we'll go up to Villa Esplendida really quick. Pardon me as I find my way over there. This is not the ideal way to get there. There there are actual roads, but it was the most direct route here. Uh, so Villa Esplendida is all laid out. If you look at it from above, you can see that the roads make a very particular pattern with the tower right here. Well, actually, we're behind it at the moment. With the tower right there being the center of town. So um, there are some lowered areas that were intended to be various different shops and living areas. Uh, there is a metro station here with connections to various areas. Now, uh, Godo was one of the, the native Spanish speakers in our city uh, being bilingual as a nation. Uh, this area was probably one of the better translated areas. And of course it has its large marketplace. However, most of the build plots were never filled in. So we're gonna find the diagonal again here. Oh, there it is, floating in midair. Now this is gonna take us back down to the Avenue of Revolution where we first started. Now there are a few odd little things around town like this leaf man or this owl or whatever this is. Somebody built it. We have no idea who. And I believe Rick or Edu lives in this treehouse back here. And they have no signs, so I don't know who it is. Anyways, we can cross across into the park from here on this little footbridge straight into the temple again, but we are actually going to cut through and go right back to the center of town here. Now, as far as TDC is concerned for the future, we are always adding things. We recently added this row of condos here. Uh, they are actually the only non-custom designed buildings in the area. These were copied off of a YouTube video and adapted for our purposes. Uh, the insides are generally furnished and There is roof access as well. So uh, it looks like this one isn't fully furnished. That bathroom was never properly built out. We're going to go ahead and walk on top of Habitat 420 and then wrap things up. I don't know where the stairs to the roof are here. However, I know there have to be some. Well, we'll go ahead and walk out onto this lower roof. Anyways, that's pretty much TDC. You can see here our two main roads built considerably wider than most sieves in the genre have in the past. Uh, most of us played in Mount Augusta previously where the standard width for the roads was about five blocks, three travel and two sidewalk. Uh, we decided to go much wider here, and I think it benefited us in the sense that we were able to fit the rail line directly onto the road and also add these planters and street lights along the main street. Uh, we did generate quite a few iconic buildings, the Palacio, the library, 
and of course the one that we're standing on habitat 420 in addition to several smaller buildings and definitely the zen or, or the Taoist temple and some of the other unique interesting things that you find around tdc some of them mimi and some less so uh Hopefully, uh, this town will continue to evolve. You can always find us. If we're not playing here, we are in Mount Augusta to the south, where most of us originally came from. Uh, and also, coincidentally, who we happened to destroy in that war. Uh, then again, everybody is friendly again, and we've had a fun time playing with them recently. Hopefully, we'll see a resurgence of activity up here. And I definitely encourage anybody who likes to come visit as long as you clean up after yourself.